do that. Um, I'm also going to type in here um, omit number 42 in chapter five assignment. So what this means is you do not have to do number 42 in the chapter five assignment. It's um, to me, it's a little ambiguous. Yeah, that's what I was stuck with. 42. Number 42? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do 42. Yeah, because I was like, what, what, what do I do with this? <laughs> no, we're not going to do 42, but we will. Um, maybe I can do something similar after this one. First, I'm okay. going to do this example, and then we'll do something uh, similar. Yeah, thank you. So we're up to about 21, so we're going to have to start. Um, OK, so this uh, hopefully you want you all see. Uh, the circuit I have up and. Um, I'm going to do my best with my uh, tablet, but it, it's. Not as good as I thought it was going to be here, but we'll get through. This is an example very similar to uh, one of the later questions in the assignment, assignment number five. Uh, so let's let's run through this one. And let me make sure. Let me make sure. I, yeah, there we go. OK. OK. So. Um, in this example, uh, we want to find the value of all the resistors given what information we have. Since a series, it's a series circuit, uh, what I do know is that I equals V over R, my Ohm's law, and I can rearrange that multiple different ways. Uh, if it's a series circuit, then uh, I know that I is the same throughout. And I also know that our total equals R1 plus R2 plus etc. So armed with that information, I should be able to solve this circuit. Um, so what I like to do I've already mentioned the uh, direction of current, but I still like for completeness to put my plus minus on the battery. The little line is for the minus. The large, the large line, whoops, here is for the plus. Let me angle this, see if I can angle this right. Okay. So I know that, I know that current, boys, Current leaves the plus, and I'm given that the current is two milliamps. And I want to find R1. I'm going to look at R1 first. Oh, and I forgot to label these. Let me label these here. R2 and R3. So we're going to find over here, R1 equals, R2 equals, and R3 equals. Yes, sir. Maybe is R3 and R4 because we already. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Make sure. Make sure um, let's see who's awake here. R3. And this should be R4. Thank you. It's over here. We have R4. We have four resistors to figure out. A little tougher than I thought. OK, so what do we know? Um, I like to show bubbles to show the voltage with respect to common. In this example in our text, sometimes it's just written down with a line. So I'm going to add bubbles just to show I know what the voltages are with respect to ground or common. And the one I do know is this one. That is common. Therefore, this must be zero volts. 
Um, up here, I'm told that this is 32 volts. Um, over here, we are told this is minus 20 volts. And over here, this is minus 34 volts. Um, there's another one that's missing that I didn't show, and that is this one right here. Uh oh, my apologies here. I made um, a little mistake in this example, which I'm going to correct here very quickly. Oh, boys. So, yeah. Um, pardon me. Let me let me quick cor correct this here. So if you're writing this down, please make this correction. This was actually 82 volts. So I'm going to write it down over here so that we'll know it. Let me see if I can get my pen to work. E equals 82 volts. 82 volt battery. So uh, basically you're given a circuit and, and you're allowed to make some measurements. You're told you have an 82 volt battery. And so this battery, this messy looking battery here is 82 volts. You measure two milliamps and then you measure at, um, let's give these some points here. At point A, you measured 32. At point B, we have zero. At point C, you measured minus 20, negative 20. And at point D, it's supposed to be a D, we measure minus 34. So now we put on our Sherlock Holmes hats and see if we can figure out some information. Um, we are going to be using Ohm's law. Thus, we must find areas in the circuit where we know two of the three uh, variables. We need to know I and V so we can find R or V and R so we can find I and so on. <coughs> we are given I and we're asked to find R so hopefully we, we can find V for each one. So I'm going to look at this one here, V R1. And to find V R1, it's going to be the voltage on the left subtract what we have for a voltage on the right. And I know on the right is minus is sorry, it's 32 volts. 32 volts. So I just have to find out what's on the left. And this is a tricky one because some of you might think it's 82 volts. And it would be 82 volts if we had zero hooked up over here. But we do not have that. No way. We don't have zero. What we have hooked up over here, we're told, is what? What is the voltage right here? Minus 34. Thank you. Minus 34 volts. So if I start at a known spot, such as minus 34. Did somebody turn on their video here? I think um, Michael Angelo did. Ah, there we go. Thank you. So if we start at minus 34, and uh, let's get my pen back in action here. I am traveling. I'm over here at minus 34. I'm an electron or something, and I travel all the way up here. Well, I'm going up from minus to plus. I'm going up a distance of 82 volts. So minus 34 plus 82 gives us 
48. 48, and that was the error I made at first here. 48 volts. 48 volts. So I, I can even draw it here again. At this point is at 48 volts. And uh, double check, 48, drop 82. Uh, we end up here with minus 34. So we're at 48. On uh, this side, of course, we're at 32 volts. The drop from 48 to 32 is 16 volts. And so isolating R1, uh, we can find R1 as the volt drop across R1 divided by the current through R1. And so we're going to have 16 volts divided by 2 milliamps giving us eight kilo ohms as the resistance of R1. Any questions? So, Mr. Hossein, I have to mute you here, there. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the same for R2. We need to find out the volt drop across R2. When we find out the volt drop across R2, that will allow us to figure out R2 as VR2 divided by I. Remember, it's the same I. So we're going to have something divided by 2 milliamps. So we need to find the drop. Can anybody tell me the drop across R2? 32 volts. 32 volts, because if we start here at 32, we drop down to zero volts, because point B is at zero. And uh, so we drop 32 volts. So here we have 32 divided by 2 milliamps, giving us 16 kilo ohms. What I did, 16 kilo ohms. So we have. 8K, 16K, and I'm drawing crook, very crooked here. V, R3 divided by I. So we have whatever VR3 is divided by 2 milliamps. And over here, VR3 is the drop from this point to this point. And um, we're dropping from 0 down to minus 20. So I think we'll agree that the drop must be 20 volts. We're dropping. So now we're going to have 20 volts divided by 2, giving us 10K ohms as R3. And finally, the drop across R4. We're dropping from minus 20 to minus 34. So that drop must be 14 volts. So here we're going to have 14 volts divided by 2 milliamps, giving us 7 kilo ohms. And um, let me see if I can grab a different color here. Excuse me. Pointer options, ink color. Let's get a great, nice green. Hopefully we can see the green. Let's see if I, I don't have a lot of room, but I might be able to squeeze these in here. We have here eight kilo ohms. R2 is going to be 16 kilo ohms. R3 is going to be 10 kilo ohms. And our four is going to be seven kilo ohms. I can't resist. Um, I can find our total by adding all of them together. So I have 8K plus 16K plus 10K plus 7K, giving us a grand total resistance of 2434, 41K. 
15, 31, 41, yeah. Yeah, 41. 41 kilo ohms is our total resistance. And so I want to do a little check here. My little check will be that I should be equal it, to... It's consistent e, with the current. Yeah, E divided by our total. And so we have an E of 82 volts. Total 41 kilo ohms. And that gives us 2 milliamps. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> if that uh, did not come out to, if we did not come out to 2 milliamps, we made a mistake somewhere. So thankfully, the math works. Uh, somebody earlier asked for these voltages here, VA, VB, VC, VD. So the point voltages, for example, at A, it was provided for you already, but that's 32 volts, zero, minus 20 volts, and minus 34 volts. These voltages here are with respect to ground. We say ground, but in this case it's common. With respect to ground, that means that one wire of your multimeter is on A, the other one is on common. One wire to B, the other one to common. One wire to C, the other one to common. So it's what is the difference between uh, the voltage at D and the voltage at common, which is zero. How much higher is D than common? Um, so to measure voltage, we need two points. If you're only given one point, it's assumed that the second point must be common. There is another way to express it. We could indicate, for example, what is VAC? And the definition of VAC, well, we put uh, one wire at point A and the other at point B. And what your multimeter does, it takes VA and it subtracts VC to give you the difference between the two from point A to over here, whoops, point C. This difference between A and C is going to be, we have 32 volts at A and we have a minus 20 at C. And so the difference is 52 volts from, from point A to point C. The difference is 52. If you're an electron traveling from point A to point C over here, uh, you travel a total distance of 52 volts. Along the way, you cross the place that we call zero, but that doesn't matter. It ignores that. Pretty messy drawing. Does anybody have any questions? Is this easy, hard, medium? You just have to follow the, the steps, I think. Yeah, the only, yeah, the one problem is there, there's many different steps. Uh, everybody who does this may do it a, a slightly different way. Let me. Uh, Ray? Yes. So if, if you're measuring the point A and C, um, what is not an addition because of the common? I mean, because you subtract the uh, two voltages, right? Yeah. So, let me 
because both have the both have, both have the same polarity, right? Um, not necessarily. Let me um, see if I can redraw that. The A to C was uh, 16, 10, 32 to minus 20. So if uh, bear with me one second here. Um, if we look here, it will my pen work. Pointer options, ink color, Let's get a purple in here and see if I can get that working. Yeah, there we go. So I think at, at point A, we had minus 32 volts and um, we had a resistor, another resistor, and I think at point C here, we were at minus 20 volts. Let me show them as a bubble like this. And um, here we had our common, which tells us that this point is at zero volts. And um, we had a 10K and a 16K, but I don't remember which. So let's go back to the, oh, back to the original here. Messy, 16K, 10K. Have to get used to uh, the software change, 16K, 10K. So we had here 16K, 10K and two milliamps. Two milliamps of flow. So we we established that the drop here is 32 volts and the drop over here is 20 volts. And our question was, what is VAC? So if by pure definition, VAC is VA minus VC. So without even thinking, we, we could put, oh, my apologies, that's what somebody, that's a plus 32. So that's 32 volts minus a minus 20 volts, which is the same as 32 volts plus 20 volts. We end up with 52 volts. On our number line, so if we were to draw a number line here, and uh, over here we have zero volts. Down here is our minus 20 volts. And up here is our 32 volts. That happened to be point A. And that was point C. And we asked for VAC. So VAC is the distance between A and C. And I think we can see here from the number line that it, that is 52 volts. The fact that we have zero in the middle doesn't matter. It's a little hard on the head though. Does does that help? Uh, yes, can you just um, uh, show back the, the other draw just to um just to be clear the 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 last one the the one that is messy <laughs> oh, okay yeah i got it the art yeah thank you um let's let's carry on and do
try this again. Uh, slideshow from current slide, right click. Ooh, pointer options, ink color, ink. All right. Um, I'm going to throw another example at you that it, 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 in the same kind of format here, but in this one, which may end up being a test question. We'll make it easy for this one. We'll put our ground right here and we're going to make this um, 12 volts. We'll make this one 48 volts. And we'll make this um, 2K. Let's make this one 5K. And we'll make this one one kilo ohm. We'll call this point A. We'll call this point B. We'll call this one point C. And we'll call this one point D. And we want to figure out what is VA, what is VB, what is VC, and what is V. D. Where do we start? Even though there are two power supplies, a 12 volt and an eight, a 48 volt, are Keen powers of observation, note that the resistors are in series. It is a series circuit. Oh, thankfully. Thankfully, we have a series circuit. Therefore, we can find our total as 1K plus 2K plus 5K, giving us 8K. Wow, so I already got some bonus marks on my test here. I, I showed that I know the total resistance. Um, what I don't know, well, it's a series circuit, so there is only one current. So the current will be some voltage divided by 8K. <sighs> well, uh oh, let's let's I'm kind of stuck. What voltage is it? 12? Is it 48? Is it something else? Let me show that I know that a 48 volt supply is going to try and send current in this direction. A 12 volt supply is going to try and send current in this direction. They do not agree. They're fighting. They're said to be opposing. One will win probably the bigger one and the 48 volt battery will probably end up charging the 12 volt battery. So this one is easy because just the bigger one wins. So I think current will end up going in this direction. So this battery, we're going to be charging this battery. That's OK. So now that we know the direction of current, then I know the direction of the volt drops. So I can show that. I'm going to have three volt drops here. VR1, VR2, VR3. I don't know each one. If I knew one of them, I could use Ohm's law. You know, I could find I equals V R1 over R1. I could find I as V R2 over R2. And I could find I as V R3 over R3. 
and it would all be the same I. But I don't know any of those. The only thing I know is our total. So this would be I is equal to something over our total. I know that my R total happens to be 8K. So I just have to find what is the volt drop across the 8K. To do that, let me get a different color ink here. Sir. Yes. How you consider the uh, register equivalency, Artevinin? Uh, when you. We are uh, not. We cannot talk about Arthevenin, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you because Arthevenin is not this chapter. That's chapter eleven. So I I cannot address any questions um, about anything that that is not for this course. Okay. Um, so here. We are going to try and show what is this 8K and the 8K. Is. These three resistors, that's our total or equivalent resistance 8K. So we need to know what is the drop. Across those resistors. What is the volt drop? Total volt drop. So on the one side, we have 48 volts. That happens to be VD, by the way. I might as well write it in here. 48 volts. On the other side, We have 12 volts and that's VA. And we know that because we have our common right here. Which is zero volts. And so if I travel from zero and I go up 12. We must be at 12 volts. If I start. Right here at zero volts and I travel up 48 then I must be here at 48 volts. Um, let me make sure that's not a negative. That's just pointing to it. So if I have 48 on one side and 12 on the other, what's the drop from D to A? 36 volts. 36 volts. So 36 volts is said to be VDA. Where this is point D and this is point A. 36 volts dropped. Uh, so Ray, did you say uh, voltage drop uh, A to D, you say negative 36? Uh, v A to D would be negative 36, yes. Okay. So we have here 36 volts. Uh, so what's 36 divided by 8? 4, 8 to 32. 4.5. 4.5. So we have, thank you, 4.5 milliamps. So here, 4.5 milliamps. Four point five milliamps. We're almost there. What we have left to figure out is VB and VC. Hmm. Well, 
I also should figure out the volt drops across the resistors. And um, for example, the volt drop across the 5K resistor must be equal to I times 5K. So we have 4.5 milliamps multiplied by 5K. Five fives are 25, five fours are 20, 22. Yep. 22.5 volts. So here, 22.5 volts. This 4.5 milliamps keeps going here. When the 4.5 milliamps crosses through the 2K, we end up with 9 volts. 4.5 times 2 is 9. Ks times millis cancel out. Ohms, which I always leave out, ohms times amps gives you volts. The 4.5 milliamps carries on. Series circuit, same current. 4.5 times 1. 4.5 milliamps times 1K. 4.5 volts. And then the 4.5 milliamps keeps going. Charges up the battery. Four point five milliamps. And uh, over here flows up. So we better do a little check here. If we add 4.5, 9, and 22.5, do we get 36 volts? I hope we do. If we don't, then we start all over because we made a mistake. 9 and 4.5 is 13.5. Yes, we get 36 volts. We could do double check here. Um, BR1, uh, we have 4.5 volts divided by 1K equals 4.5 milliamps. BR2 would be 9 volts divided by 2K, 4.5 milliamps. And finally, VR3 is 22.5 volts divided by 5K, giving us, of course, 4.5 milliamps. All from our original. So the trick was once we found our total, we need the voltage across that, our total. Oh, we're not done, are we? What's VB? Anybody want to tell me what VB is? Sixteen point five volts. Very good. How did you get that? Uh, subtracting forty eight minus twenty two point five and then minus nine. Very good. Um, I'm going to try it a different way. Uh, I'm going to start at the place I'm happy, my happy place. My happy place is zero ground. And if I start at ground and I go up 12, then I'm here at 12 volts. And then I keep traveling 
And over here, I am going from minus to plus. I go up 4.5. So 12 plus 4.5. I must be at. 16.5 volts. At this point, 16.5 volts dB. And then if I'm at 16.5 volts and I travel to point C, I'm going up because I'm going from minus to plus. I'm going up nine. So 16.5 go up nine. Over here, we must be at 16.5 plus nine. 25.5 volts. And then just to make sure we did not make a mistake. From 25.5 volts, if I travel. Up by 22.5. That would be. Yes, 48 volts. So you must get comfortable traveling. Um, what uh, the method you said, which is completely correct, you traveled the other way. I'm running out of ink color. Let me, let me try this blue. You decided to start with. My pen has to be the right way. You decided to start at this happy place, zero volts. You traveled up 48, bringing us up here to 48 volts. But then you went this way, which you're going from plus to minus, so you drop. 22.5. So if we take our 48 and subtract 22.5, we end up with 25.5. And then if you want to keep traveling in that direction, then we have our 22.5 and we're going again plus to minus. That's why it's important to show those. We're dropping 9, 22.5 drop 9. We're now at 16.5. So the way uh, you showed it, you dropped 22.5. And then over here, you dropped 9. And finally, you dropped uh, the 4.5 volts. So you can travel from those points, A, B, C, D, um, to, to get those voltages with respect to ground. Uh, but then uh, somebody earlier asked, what is VDA? By definition, VDA is VD minus VA. And so that gives us um, 48 volts minus. Oh, they asked a different minus 12 volts, giving us 36 volts. Uh, my apologies, somebody asked, what is VAD? VAD is VA minus VD. And so what we have is 12 volts minus 48 volts. And that would give us minus 36 volts. Um, so we note the difference here between VDA, which is 36 volts, and VAD, which is minus 36 volts. The silence means that everybody is happy. Uh, Ray? Yes. In examples like this, uh, it's always the 
bigger voltage that will dictate the current flow? In a series circuit, yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. In a series circuit. Excuse me, sir. Yes. This is not a question, but it's a comment that I have. In that case, in the example, is it better to apply the Kirchhoff's law to become the two power, the two voltage source into one? So it's easier to find all the, the values. Um, so what? Let me uh, see if I if I have this right, and I'm gonna have to. Oops, I have to add a slide. Sorry about that. Okay. Let me let me try this again here. New slide. I should have had a few new slides here. And um, bear with me one second. There we go. I think we're back. And um, pointer options, ink color. I have to do this every time, I think. Nope, didn't work. Try this again. How come it didn't work? Pen. Now we're working. So I believe what you're saying, one, one method, and there are many different solutions to these problems. When you do the solution one way, please use the other methods to confirm that you did not make an error. And um, one method that our textbook talks about is taking the problem that we had and uh, we had 12 volts and 48 volts and we had hmm, i don't remember the resistors i know it ended up being 8k one, one kilo ohm two kilo ohms and five kilo ohms and five kilo ohms so a total of 8k yeah so one solution that the textbook talks about is to realize that the power supplies are series opposing Therefore, we can simplify this circuit as one battery that is 48 minus 12, and then one resistor, which is the total, um, total resistor. So this becomes a uh, battery of 36 volts. and an 8K resistor. And this is said to be an equivalent circuit. And once you have your equivalent circuit, it's very easy to find I. So I is 36 volts divided by 8K, giving us our 4.5 milliamps. Once you have the equivalent circuit, you obtain the infor the only piece of information usually you can find. In this case, it's I. And we take that I and we must bring it back to the original circuit. So here's our I. Whoops. We take that I and we bring it back to the original circuit. So we have to be careful here. We still have to realize that the 48 volts is pushing harder. So now we have 4.5 milliamps in this direction. And the order of these resistors, um, I don't remember. Uh, I think that was the 5K. 5 to 1. 
2K and 1K. No, it's K. the opposite. It's the opposite in the other direction. Oh, this was a one? Yeah. And over here was a five. Oh, yeah. OK. Yes. And so once you have that, you simply take the 4.5 milliamps multiplied by 5K. So we know here we have our 22.5 volt drop. And then over here, uh, we have our 9 volt drop. And then over here, 4.5 milliamps times 1K is 4.5 volt drop. And once we have those, then we can figure out A, B, and C, and D. And so if you are here holding your multimeter and one of the wires goes to common, the other wire, for example, will go over here. Let's send this wire over here to C. Then we are measuring VC. And VC is the voltage drop from C to ground. And that voltage drop will be twenty five point five volts. This point, and the way I like to think about it, when you look up there, VC must be somewhere in between 48 volts and over here 12 volts so 25.5 is is in between 48 and 12. all these voltages va b c and d must be between 48 and 12. So we have here. If I want to measure yeah, let's put it over here. Then the A is going to be 12 volts. B V B is going to be how much? Five volts. Sixteen point five. Twenty one volts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sixteen point five. Is increasing by 4.5 volts. Yes, VB. I, to find VB, I can start right here and I go up by 12 volts to 12, and then I go up another 
4.5 volts. So we have 12 plus 4.5 giving us over here our 16.5. And if I wanted uh, VC, uh, then I would go up another 9 volts. I'm going up too high here. So if I go up another 9 volts, then it must be 22.5 volts for VC. And then for VD, I'm going up another 22.5. Uh, 20 BC is 25.5. Yes. And I go up another 22.5, and then this would be 48 volts. This would be a good test question, wouldn't it? Very good test question. Please make sure you can do this one. Are there any other assignment number five problems that people are having trouble with? Ray? Yes? Uh, I have like a concept uh, question for the first the first exercise of the assignment the number three yes it asks to calculate the total resistance but um, when there is a like a, an an open circuit uh, where 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 is my uh, where do I begin and where do I finish the measurement? Okay. Oh, uh, do you? So question you number three B, for example. Yeah, because I can go from the white circle to the other white circle, and maybe I can have one res total resistance, but if I go from w one white circle to the black circle, mm -hmm. R R1 and RT, R3, yeah. so, so I'm, I'm not sure about good that. Good question. Let's, let's do another example uh, with that. Let's see here. Oh, is it funny. Each time I have to select my pen, select a color. I'll remember to do that here. And then my tablet. Yeah, let's make them all 2K easier.
All right. Let's tackle this problem. Okay. So we may have to mute some microphones here. Let's see here. Mute. And we'll take this opportunity to grab a different color ink. Let me try purple. So we're asked to find the total resistance. When you come to NBCC in January, you will be told um, if you want to find the total resistance, first thing we must do is disconnect the battery. We'll turn the power off and then we will take our multimeter, set to measure resistance, and uh, we're going to connect um, our multimeter. I'll show the wire up here. One wire right there and another wire over here. So that's similar to your problem. In the assignment, they simply did not show the battery. They assume you remove the power supply or the battery and you're going to measure here resistance um, so we must disconnect when we measure the resistance it um, becomes six kilo ohm yeah you if you have a multimeter uh what the multimeter does the, most of our multimeters uh, I got a dial here and we're set to measure resistance. The multimeters have in them a little nine volt battery. And the multimeter has two wires, usually a red and a black. And the multimeter using the nine volt battery applies a voltage, sends a current through the circuit and the multimeter, what it does is it finds R as V over I. It measures how much current comes back. So the multimeter applies nine volts and it checks to see how much current has returned, divides the two, and it tells you the resistance. That's all it does. So that's what your multimeter is going to do. It's going to send with, with the battery disconnected here. It's going to send some current uh, out and it's going to see, you know, how much current is flowing. And it'll take that current, divide it into our little nine volt battery, nine volts divided by the current, and it'll tell you the resistance. Now, here's the thing here the current only flows if it can return to where it came from. So if you're a bunch of electrons flowing, you encounter a node or junction at B. And because this point is said to be open, there's no connection here, then this I, no current. Same thing over here. This is also an open. So I equals zero. So those branches might as well not be there. The current is going to go right straight through all the current. It's going to come through here. It's going to go flow right down through over here and come back. So that tells us that our total resistance is indeed 6K. The current flows through this 2K battery. That's 2K resistor, flows through this 2K resistor, and it flows through this 2K resistor. The other ones have no flow. So the volt drop across this 2K ohm resistor is zero volts. The volt drop over here is zero volts because 
I equals zero. So, trick question, the resistance would be six kilo ohms. In this circuit, we would ignore this resistor and this resistor are not in the circuit. They're said to not be in, they're not in the path of the current. Uh, right? Yes. But, so, when we measure the resistance, it depends on where we put the the cables of the of the metal, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah. So I, I can put the one cable in point A and other cable in point E. And yes, but, that, that would be a but that's not part of the question. That will happen in chapter seven. We're gonna do that in chapter seven. Okay, sorry, but going back to the to the question, the assignment uh, question. Okay, so it's here. in in exercise C, for example. See right there, it it shows you where. See the RT. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Yes, yes, I can see it. So it must connect between these two points. Oh, okay, oh, okay. And so that's because because they're showing the arrow here looking in. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, they should have highlighted. You know, I, I think it would have been better. It would have been better if they did this. And over here, this, and over here. So you're, you must connect there. Not allowed to connect there. Not allowed to connect there. So really in this circuit, not in the circuit, not in the circuit. If current cannot flow through the resistor because of an open, then it's not in the circuit. Okay, Ray, thank you very much. And last last question. Yes. Uh, one end of that um, circuit, was in a white uh, circle, but the other with a black uh, circle. There is a different? No, typo. Uh, just an error in the ink. Okay. That's just an same. error in the ink, yeah. Thank you. Same, same with number four here, see? Um, we connect our meter here. There will be no connection here because it's an open. Later in chapter seven, we'll look at and in later chapters, uh, we'll look at connecting in different spots. Be careful with this one. No connection. Right. OK. So hope that helps. Back to this circuit. Um, let us remove. The person. Yeah. We're going to remove this person. And what we're going to do is reconnect our battery. So let's connect our, our battery back in the circuit. I don't have a good eraser here, but you get the idea. Well, when we do that, we can find I as 12 volts divided by 6K, giving us 2 milliamps. Now, the question is, where does the I flow? Well, 2 milliamps. It flows right through point B. Right over here to two milliamps. Right down here. Two milliamps. 
and we see our, our circuit here and then the, the voltage gets pumped back up. Pressure gets pumped back up uh, up over here. So, you know, we, we do have zero volts here and over here we have 12 volts. So what you should be able, not be able to resist right now, since you know that two milliamps flows through 2K, well, that must be a drop here of four volts. The two milliamps through the 2K, another drop of four volts. Two milliamps times 2K, another drop of four volts. So with that, I can figure out, well, I know VA is 12 volts. I could figure out VB. Anybody tell me what VB is? VB is uh, your voltage drop. Eight, eight, volts. Eight. eight volts. Eight volts. Eight volts. Eight volts because, volts. yes. We're at 12 and we drop four. So we must be at eight volts, yeah. And now what about VC? Four volt. Four yeah. volts. So we are at eight and we drop four, so we're at four volts. And finally, VD, we are at four. Yeah. And we drop four, bringing us to zero volts. Hey, Ray, I have a question. Yes. So how would it be affecting if we have the ground in the letter B? I mean, if we have a ground between. Yeah. If we move our ground or common over here, if we move it, it will affect all the single sub subscript voltages. It will affect these, but it does not affect the current and it does not affect the volt drops. The volt drops are four volts, four volts and four volts. The current is two milliamps. The voltages with respect to ground, which are these guys, will be affected because we measure with respect to ground, if we move the ground, it will change these. But okay. maybe I'll change. So I can tell you that if you move your ground to B, then VB here will become zero volts. All the other ones get adjusted accordingly. The differences stay the same. But we haven't finished. We have not figured out VE and we have not figured out the F. So, for example, if the letter B becomes zero, the next voltage, which is uh, VC, what would be the difference? I mean, because we normally have to find the difference between one yeah. voltage and the other so, one. Uh, okay. Okay. If so. If you made VB zero volts, you're asking what would VC become? What is the difference right here between VB and, and VC? VC is four volts lower. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Then VC would become four volts lower. Okay. The differences stay the same. But yeah, so I, I don't want to look at that yet until we finish this example, if you don't mind. Okay, so we, we can work that out if the ground was different. Maybe we can look at it. But I want to finish the example first. I want to figure out okay. VE and VF. Can anybody tell me what is VE? is zero. Zero? I can tell you that the answer is not zero. 
I will ask you to become an electron. We'll become a little orange electron. Where do you want to start your travels? You an electron traveling throughout the world. I, I always like to start right here, my safe place, zero. So if I'm an electron traveling, I go up 12 volts. Of course, I'm at I'm at 12 volts. And then I drop four. I'm now at eight volts. Now, all of the electrons are going to carry on because that's the electrical current. But should you be one rebel electron and you decide you want to explore over here? So I is, is zero. So you're not going to travel continuously, but you might just for a millisecond just travel um, a little bit. And in your travels, you are moving from eight volts eight volts and how far of a drop is this zero because there's no current so eight drop zero gives you a voltage of eight eight and you keep traveling and oh you're at e is that because uh, voltage is the pressure? It's a uh, pressure difference. Difference. Current is a flow. Voltage is a pressure difference. Potential difference. With this in mind, can you tell me what the F would be? Four volts. Four volts. So we'll start at C, and we note that C is four volts. But instead of traveling down, we're going to travel this way. And then we have a volt drop here of zero. Four minus zero gives us four volts. We have an important concept here that we can have a voltage when there is no current. We can have a voltage even with no current. Um, So if you have a battery, uh, you when you measure the battery, there is no current, but we can still have a voltage. Double uh, A batteries are 1.5 volts. Even when I is zero, we will still measure the voltage. That's the reason that battery testers, um, they actually have a circuitry inside to cause current to flow. And they can tell if the battery is bad because that voltage drops when current flows. Uh, because with no current, as, as we just saw here, there is no drop. So over here, with no current, we have no voltage drop, but if you cause current to flow, there could be a drop and that four volts would drop. That eight volts will drop if current starts to flow. But we do have right now an open circuit. No connection back to the battery. Current will only flow if it can come back to where it came from. Uh, Ray? Yes. 
um, sorry, so for the two uh, two kilo ohm resistor at the uh, point E circuit, so we can say that there is no voltage drop across this resistor, even if there is an eight volts that can be measured on the circuit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I um, might be a little early for this example. Let's see. Ah. But we'll finish up. We're almost done. Let me finish up with an example that may help some of you with that concept. And it's a, a Christmas example, maybe, or an example with lights. And. Um, We have hundred and twenty volts in uh, our homes, though so it, it, this voltage would be AC, but I'm showing it as a DC voltage. And we have ten Christmas lights, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Ten Christmas lights. Each of these lights, if they are equal lights, should have across them how much? So if if all R are equal, then V R of each one, if if there's ten all oh, went too high, hang on. Sorry. Try this again from current slide. If all R are equal, then the R equals 10 volts each because no, 12 volts each. So we have 12 volt Christmas lights. 10 lights times 12 volts each, 120 volts. That makes sense. They're the series Christmas lights. And in this example, we have a break in the circuit. Your dog chewed the light. Because the break is in the circuit, I equals zero because over here we have an open. So the lights were supposed to be. 10 lights, 12 volt lights each, giving you 120 volts. We were supposed to have 12 volts across each light, but because of the open, now we have zero volts across each light.
Um, <laughs> and I want to measure V X Y. Can anybody tell me what V X Y is going to be? X is your positive and Y is your common. If the if the, the circuit is open, X, Y will be the same voltage as the source, I think. So if we connect our meter here. If, if you put the voltmeter on point X and point Y, the voltmeter will measure 120 volts, I think. Open circuit has full applied voltage E across it. Yes, so here we will have 120 volts. The reason I is zero is because all of our voltage is dropped across the open, leaving no voltage for the other resistors. So if we call this R1, then I equals V R1 over R1, zero volts over R1, zero milliamps. The open high hogs, it, it takes all the voltage. So we find the open, the bad light. And now if we were to reconnect them, then now we would have zero volts across the open if we connect them. So now we would have a short, a short has zero volts across a short. So if we were to make our connection zero, now current will flow and we will have 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. In, in case one, which was with the open, Kirchhoff's voltage law said that E, which is 120 volts, was equal to zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus 120 plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. So where the open had the full voltage. In case two, uh, where we put a short or reconnected cross XY, then E, which is 120 volt, Kirchhoff's voltage law is equal to 12 volt plus 12 volts plus 12 volts plus 12 volts etc until we get our 120 here this is a series circuit if any light goes open then the current drops to zero that's a reason why for lights it's very much preferred to have parallel circuits because then in parallel circuits should you have a break in any resistor and any light any light burns out it does not affect the others so parallel is better that way than series
but in here for parallel, you will need uh, 10 cables. For parallel, we need more wires and the light bulbs instead of 12 volt lights, they will have to be 120 volt lights. So it's a different system. Advantages and disadvantages for the parallel, we will need uh, possibly more wires. But if one light burns out, um, you don't have to spend a lot of time finding it. You know, it, it does not affect the other lights. In a series circuit, if one light burns out, they're all out. So I think we've gone um, along enough here. We're, we're going to have to stop. Uh, I'll make sure. Are, are there any other questions here before we? Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yes. I had two more questions. Okay. If that is okay. Sure. The first one is, let's say that we have the same circuit. It, it is open, right? And we are trying to find total resistance. What would happen? Let's say we have the same circuit, but it is open. The reading will be zero, or that would be a mistake. What would happen there? That okay. is the first one. So if you want to find um, total resistance, we must, first of all, we turn off the batteries. And uh, so we're left with this and a bunch of resistors and an open and then a bunch of resistors. And so if we were to measure R, um, because of the open, the R would be infinity, very, very large. So your multimeter will say resistance is, is very high. Infinity, it'll say. Infinite resistance. OK, thank you. And the second one is, let's say that I want to find the total resistance, but the circuit is closed, but I connected no, let's say I connected in one corner, the two sides of the ohmmeter, let's say the positive and the negative. I connect them in the same point. The reading will be zero. That will be a mistake. What will happen there? If you connect them at the same point, you yeah. will read zero ohms. Yeah. Zero ohms? Yeah. So we, we will read zero. So uh, we'll do that in the lab. Regrettably, we, we have to wait for January to be able to do the lab. But if you have, um, let, let's do a one last quick example. If that's 2K, 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 and if I am over here and I have my meter, and if I was to connect one wire of my meter, one wire of my meter right here, and one wire over here, what do I measure? 6K? Yes, so we would be measuring 6K. In the same way, if you connect them together, if you connect the um, wires to the same spot, you'll measure 0K. So the way we are showing it right here, these two resistors are not in the circuit because um, the current cannot flow through them. The path, uh, the path of the current the path of the current will be through these three resistors and back. So your meter will only see, these three resistors, your 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 multimeter does not see that one, and your multimeter does not see this one because current does not flow through it. By connecting your where you connect your meter creates the circuit. 
and thus gives you your equivalent resistance or your total resistance for that circuit. The total resistance only includes the resistors through which the current can flow. OK, sir, thank you. You're welcome. So I think it's it's been a fairly long, uh, almost two hours. So I think we're going to we're going to stop here. And um, I'll see you guys again on Tuesday. You can email me too if you have any questions before then. And don't forget your assignment. Number five is due tonight. Assignment five is due tonight. Uh, no, assignment five is due Monday night. My apologies. Sorry for scaring you or anybody. Assignment five is due Monday evening on the 18th. All right, take care, guys. Have a great weekend, and I'll actually see you Monday at 1030 for uh, computer control devices. Yeah, right. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thanks, you too. Thank you, sir. Yes.